Well, welcome back to the geology of the southwestern U.S. This week, we're going to talk about the geology of the Las Vegas area. And no nickel slots or cheap drinks here. Nothing but first-class geology all the way. And as a great example, we're looking north along the Wilson Cliffs in the Red Rock area of Las Vegas. This is the western part, or the eastern part, actually, of the Spring Mountains. Looking north. Beautiful, huh? So our objectives this week, I'm going to give you a reminder of where the Las Vegas area is located, both geographically and geologically. We're going to look at why the place is a desert. We're going to talk about the ages and the distribution of the rock units that are found near Las Vegas. And remember, I've told you before that there's every age, every kind of rock that you can find. So it's a great place to do this kind of work. And Look at the overview of the tectonic history. It's pretty simple, right? Things got squeezed, things got pulled apart. And then we'll take a quick tour of some of the geological highlights. There is so much geology here. I, I could spend, I mean, I've had classes where the entire class is the geology of the Las Vegas area. So it's gonna be one short, quick overview. Well, so the Las Vegas area, remember, lies within the southern part of the Basin and Range geologic province. And the unique part about this region is, is that the basin and range gets constricted here. So we see how wide the basin and range is. There's Salt Lake. So Salt Lake and Reno, look how wide the, the basin and range is here, about 600 miles. And when you come south, there's the Sierra Nevada block. When you come south, it gets constricted down between the Wasatch Range and the Colorado Plateau and the Sierras, and so we reach the, basically about the thinnest point of the basin and range in the region uh, around Las Vegas. So in addition to the normal, normal faults, that's these guys, these north-south trending normal faults, what's going to happen when we get down here into the southern basin and range now I say southern basin and range, that's of this, the part that lies within America. Of course, the basin and range continues all the way down into Mexico. So I'm really talking about the southern, northern part. Anyway, in the southern part of the northern basin and range, we see that a, we start to pick up a whole bunch of strike-slip faults as we accommodate the, the shrinking in width of the Basin and Range Province. So the Las Vegas area is going to have quite a few of these slight strike-slip structures as well as regular normal faulting. Okay, so Las Vegas area, um, it's located at the boundary, almost right exactly at the boundary of the Mojave Desert region and the Great Basin. These are two desert regions. This is the Great Basin up here and this is the Mojave right in here. And so Las Vegas is located just about between the two places. And the arrow I've put on here, this tracks the way the weather comes from. So in our part of the world here, uh, same in Alaska, weather systems are generated out in, the, out in the Pacific and they track to the east. And so as the, as the weather tracks eastward, it has to rise up over the Sierra Nevada mountain block, creating a rain shadow effect, which makes this part of the world desert. So to remember your geography, right? Warm, moist air that's coming off of the Pacific moves eastward, and as it rises up over the mountain range, the rising air cools and condenses dropping precipitation, either rain or snow, mostly on the western side of the Sierras. And that creates the eastern side becomes very, very dry. So over there on the, on the east side of the Sierra Nevada in Owens Valley, and then of course Death Valley, and then over into Las Vegas, you get very dry regions, uh, mostly because of that. Now, geographically, Las Vegas sits in a really big valley that's formed by basin range faulting. And here's that valley right here. So this is Clark County in this map. You can see Lake Mead here. 
This is the various mountain ranges that ring Las Vegas, but it's not just one or two ranges. There's many ranges that ring Las Vegas. Anyway, this whole region here is a large valley, right? The Las Vegas Valley. You can see it written down right there. Over here in a, in a very recent satellite image, it's, it, it's about the same scale here. Notice that about an inch or whatever this is when this thing gets enlarged on your screen is 20 miles. So you're looking at like 100 miles by 100 miles here. It's a very large region. And look at the size of Las Vegas, the city. You can see the urban development here stretching uh, in all directions. The reason the development stops suddenly out here, it's basically the same as is along in Alaska there by, uh, as you go north on the Glen Highway. This is all military out here, controlled. And so uh, urban advancement uh, can't make it uh, that much further. Anyway, so what we see is all of this area, all of these ranges drain right into Las Vegas Valley. So any of the water that pours in here has to flow across Las Vegas. And it ultimately makes its way out right here in an area called Las Vegas Wash. And then it pours into Lake Mead. Uh, that means that Las Vegas is part of the basin and range, but it's not in the Great Basin. Because remember, the Great Basin is an area where all the drainage is internal. That doesn't drain out to the sea. This water, if, it, if there is water, it would drain out towards the uh, Colorado River and down into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, what else can I say about this? Well, let's go one slide further. All right. Another interesting thing about Las Vegas geologically is groundwater that it starts up here in this very high mountain range. This is the Spring Mountains, and it goes up to almost 12,000 feet. Most of it is carbonate, limestones, and things like that. Anyway, the water and moisture that's falling up in this mountain range right here, okay, there it is in this picture, um, it flows underground and then emerges from the valley gravels. The, 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 the Las Vegas Valley is filled with various clastic facies, um, uh, gravels up near the ranges, and then they get finer and finer as you go out. But anyway, the water that, that, that starts up here and gets into the ground ends up emerging down in here as springs. And so these artesian springs would flow naturally and they would pour out of the ground. This created extensive marshlands or meadows across Las Vegas Valley and what at the time was Las Vegas Wash. So Las Vegas in Spanish means the meadows. And of course, when settlers came through this valley, even though it was hotter than heck, Right? There was this flowing water across the floor of the valley, which made it a, a great place to settle. In fact, the railroad wanted this place because you had water to run your engines. Anyway, Las Vegas used to survive completely off groundwater. Even after Hoover, even after Hoover Dam was built, which was in the 30s, right? Las Vegas continued to, to, to live completely off of uh, an extensive groundwater system. Not so much anymore. Right? With, the, with the number of people that live here, they can't do it. So they suck their water out of Lake Mead. Okay, so like I said before, Las Vegas area has any type of rock or structure that you want. So this is a great place to sort of strike out and think about, like if, if you want to look at old Paleozoic rocks or younger Cenozoic volcanism, it's all there. So when we go back and look at this very simple geologic time scale, we see that all during the Paleozoic, right, it was shallow seas on a stable platform after the sea had transgressed in the early Cambrian. And then, of course, regressing completely after the Permian. So we're going to see all of these rocks stacked up, the same rocks that are at the Grand Canyon. But here in Las Vegas, they're going to be tilted and faulted a little. Then when we get up into the Mesozoic, at least the early Mesozoic was continued deposition, right? But, but terrestrial deposition. Say here, shales and sands, mostly non-marine. But then we get the severe orogeny in, a, in sort of in the Jura late Jurassic, and that's going to start to squeeze this place, making the thrust faults. And then finally, at about 20 to 30 million years ago, when we changed the plate boundary over there, right? The Farallon Plate 
heads down, and then we start to pull the place apart, which is going to make basins, ranges, and have volcanism. All right, so let's go take a quick tour. I found these three diagrams and linked them with these regions, right, the areas, the time frames. So here's our stable platform, right, going on during the Paleozoic. And then in the Mesozoic, we have an active margin, right, where we have subduction. This is over in California, but this thrust belt is what I want to draw your attention to. This is the area around Las Vegas in the Mesozoic, at least the later part of the Mesozoic, right? We're further east than the Ark. And then in the Cenozoic, we get the pulling apart of the West, the creation of the basin and range uh, um, um, geography here. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so when we zoom in, take that satellite image and we zoom in, you're going to see, notice that there's mountain ranges everywhere here. Now, every mountain range is different. Even if it's sedimentary rocks, it typically has a different facies or a different section of sedimentary rocks. So, if, depending upon what you, you want to study, you have a ton of choices. Now, the next series of diagrams, I'm going to show you some geologic maps on kind of roughly where different rock units are found. So here's Las Vegas Valley, and all of this tan area up here to the north of town and over here to the west of town, this tan area is pretty much Paleozoic rocks. Those are going to be limestones, mostly that stuff, you know, that's at the Grand Canyon, right? With a little bit of Mesozoic. That green is Mesozoic in there. And then the blue is, is Mesozoic as well. So we have Permian and Jurassic, and then we have older Paleozoic rocks. Now, south of town, this pink rocks here, and the pink rocks here, this is all Cenozoic igneous rocks. Most of it is volcanism, some of it is plutons. Brown down here, that's Precambrian. And then over here to the east of town, we see that there's a lot of different colors, a lot of faulting, a lot of strike-slip faults, a lot of normal faults, but there we're going to find Cenozoic, Mesozoic, and Paleozoic sedimentary rocks for the most part. So again, depending upon what you want to study, you're going to go in different directions. So, like I said, west and north you primarily have Paleozoic carbonate rocks, and these rocks have been thickened in the Mesozoic by thrust faulting, so they've been sort of stacked up on top of each other. So here's the Spring Mountains right to the west of town, and this is them here. The blue and the purple, that's all Mesozoic. I mean, excuse me, Paleozoic. This little uh, train track looking thing, right, that's a thrust fault, a big thrust fault called the Keystone Thrust, and all of these are big thrust faults, and then here north of town, we see them as well. So up here in the north, right, this is the Las Vegas Range and the Sheep Range. Uh, this is the Spring Mountains, and they're all full of these thickened Paleozoic carbonate rocks. Now, southeast and south of town, Okay, so we're down in this part of the world. This mountain range right here is an old stratovolcano that's made up of like andesites and dacites, some rhyolite domes. These range here and all of this in here is all volcanic activity around Hoover Dam. So that's these orange and red rocks here. Okay, and then they extend much further south of town as well. So if you want to go see igneous rocks, and we'll take a look at some of this, we'll actually drive across Hoover Dam or near it on the new bridge and go off. This is Arizona over here, and we'll go down here and look at uh, some volcanic rocks. Anyway, volcanic rocks to the southeast and south of town, and and Pluton. Then east of town, over in this part of the world, this mountain range is called Frenchman Mountain. We're going to take a trip there momentarily, but all of these rocks, okay, this is all what's called the Muddy Mountains, and the yellow and this stuff is all that material. And that's all sedimentary rocks, different sedimentary rocks at different ages, with a little bit of volcanic uh, thrown in. I actually did my master's degree on these rocks right down here on the north side of Lake Mead. 
All right, so let's go take a look. We don't have time, nearly enough time, to go look at everything. So we're going to go take a look at a couple of key areas. First up, let's go to the eastern edge of town and we'll see Frenchman Mountain. And that's this block in here, surrounded by yellow. And what we see are Precambrian up through Paleozoic sedimentary rocks. And these are the, the cool thing is these are the exact same rocks that are found stacked flat, of course, right? Not tipped over in the Grand Canyon. So if you're too lazy to hike to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, you can actually walk through Frenchman Mountain and see basically the same rocks. We're a little west of the Grand Canyon, of course, so these rocks, remember, are going to be a little more marine, a little bit thicker. So here's a shot showing Frenchman Mountain. Right? This is, we're looking east, and again, you can see the basin and range topography here. Frenchman Mountain is one of the ranges of the basin and range. Anyway, I say here, it's not a real mountain in the Alaska sense, but it's pretty big nevertheless. You try to hike up to the top of this thing, you're going to get pretty tired. Anyway, there's downtown Las Vegas and the Las Vegas uh, Stratosphere Tower. Anyway, this is a, this is a pretty high range uh, for basin and ranges anyway. And this is what we're interested in, right? We're going to look here and we can see the stratigraphy in here. These lines, that's Paleozoic stratigraphy. Well, here's a geologic map of Frenchman Mountain, of course, looking straight down from above. North is up. And if you're used to reading geologic maps, you can see what's happening here. These stripes, of course, are different age strata, older on the left, younger on the right. And not thankfully, they've got a cross section down below. And what we can see is more or less a complete section from Precambrian, this really dark brown material. Then there's an unconformity in here. Then lower Paleozoic up through, this is, Pen this is Cambrian, this is Pennsylvanian. The very top of the mountain is Pennsylvanian rocks. And the blues are all Paleozoic, and then the greens are Mesozoic. And if you look here, you can see, yes, they're cut by a few faults, right? Some of these later basin and range faults have cut this section and rotated it. And, of course, this is how this mountain range is come to be found sitting on its side, right? The tilting occurred by Cenozoic Lystric normal faulting, right? Tipping it over on its side. Pretty cool. So if you want to go from old to young, you simply have to walk from over here. There's a road right here. and You simply walk along the road, and you'll basically walk right along the entire thickness right, of this Grand Canyon and more. From the air, you can see the geomorphology right, of these tilted beds. These are hogbacks, right, where we've got you know, the dip slopes uh, all trending to the east. So what we have are east dipping Paleozoic sedimentary rocks that have been tilted along west dipping normal faults. This is the front of the range. See the edge of the city right here. This is the very eastern edge of Las Vegas and this is where that mountain goes up. That's the highest peak. And then the road cuts through this wash right here and comes through. Putting them together, you can see older on the left, younger on the right. So here's the older rocks over here, younger on the right. Yes, there are a few normal faults that offset the section to give it some of its, its character. But for the most part, it's a very complete, not too deformed section of rocks. Now we're looking the other way. This cross section that I found, sort of a photo cross section, now we're looking south, right? So the rocks are still dipping to the east, but you can see here, there's the Precambrian granite and schist, there's the unconformity, and then we start out in the Cambrian, and then we go up into the Devonian, Mississippian, Pennsylvanian, right? Permian, and then into the Triassic. Pretty cool. So, Frenchman Mountain is a great place to see the great unconformity. And of course, the great unconformity is this nonconformity that's created by Precambrian 
schists and gneiss, that's about 1,800 million or 1 1.8 billion years old on the right here. And then on the left, these are Cambrian sandstones about 550 million years old. So that boundary right in there represents over a billion years of Earth's history right, that's missing. So this was that first beach when those Paleozoic seas transgressed onto the planet. So here's a group of UAA students swarming all over the Great Unconformity right here. These are schists and gneisses that are Precambrian in age. And these rocks are those very clean uh, quartz uh, sandstones. And they, they're dipping to the left, which is, which is east. And there's the top of Frenchman Mountain back here. Anyway, you can see them. They're very dark when they're not uh, cleaned off. Okay, so that's the great unconformity. Uh, the only other place you're going to see this is if you hike down or take a raft trip in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Okay, so now let's go to the opposite side of town, over to the Spring Mountains. Remember, this was Frenchman right here, and this is probably 30 miles across, right? It's really far. Anyway, this is the Spring Mountains, and what we're going to see here are more Paleozoic rocks, but they're stacked up on top of each other, kind of piggyback style, with these multiple thrust faults. And one of the best ones anywhere, right, is this one right here. And this thrust fault right here, which continues across over here, um, is, is very famous, called the Keystone Thrust. So I say it's one of the best exposed thrust faults anywhere on Earth, right? And, and the reason for that is, is that there's lots of thrust faults on Earth, but this one actually takes dark gray carbonates and stacks them right on top of bright red sandstones. Really hard to miss. So it, uh, I say it makes it so what makes it so special is that two totally different rock types get juxtaposed here. But remember, all of this thrust faulting occurred during the Sevier orogeny, right, in the later part of the Jurassic. So here's where it's located. There's the town again. There's Frenchman Mountain. And then here's the Spring Mountains, and this set of cliffs right here is where we're going to see uh, uh, next. Well, actually, I think I'll show you. I'll show you a picture of a thrust fault. So just so that for those of you that don't remember, right, a thrust fault is simply a low angle reverse fault formed from compression. And again, all the ones around Las Vegas, right, formed during the Sevier orogeny. And I found a great diagram, and this is the location. Here's California, here's Nevada, here's Utah, and these little railroad track lines running along the countryside here are the present positions of the thrust, the, these big thrust faults that occurred during the Sevier orogeny. And so you can see there's several, two big ones. There's the Keystone right there running up through, and that's where we're going to look uh, here near Las Vegas, right? And that Keystone thrust continues in the Muddy Mountains and continues all the way up into Utah, that you can trace its, its, its continuation. Because remember, this was the area, this was the fold and thrust belt, here and here, and then over here was the arc. So there it is, back to the first picture I showed you from today's lecture. These are Jurassic Age sandstones, they're called the Aztec Formation. And it's the same rocks that are in Zion. So Zion, they call it the um, um, Navajo. It's, it's called the Aztec here. Same exact rock, right? Jurassic, big, large Jurassic deserts. This line right here, this boundary right there, is not a depositional boundary. The rocks on top of the Navajo, or the Aztec, the Aztec is dipping here to the west, right? To the right is west. This is the thrust fault right there. And that these rocks are Cambrian in age, right? So they're 550 million. These are like 160 million. So that's a thrust fault. Again, nowhere else are you going to see something this obvious. Now I say the offset here to take Cambrian rocks from below and push them up on top of Jurassic rocks, I say it's like taking the bottom of the Grand Canyon and pushing it all the way up to the top of Zion National Park. 
That's pretty incredible. But that's what was going on here, right, in the Mesozoic. Lots of squeezing, lots of shortening of the crust, but a lot of thickening of the crust. That's the way you make mountain ranges. Here's another couple of shots of the same thing. Over on the left, we see these are the Wilson Cliffs. They're pretty tall, a couple thousand feet of sandstone, very popular with big wall climbers, right? Las Vegas is a climbing mecca these days for people to come in the winter time and scale these large sandstone cliffs. And then there's the thrust fault, right? The keystone thrust. And then here's the spring mountains in the background. Those are not just one layer of Paleozoic rocks, but multiple. There's, there's about three thrust faults in here that thicken the section. And it's got an elevation of almost 12,000 feet up here at the top of Mount Charleston. Pretty impressive. Over on the right, that's if we walk up and look at the keystone thrust up close. Jurassic below, thrust fault, Cambrian carbonates above. So to summarize, the Las Vegas region has Precambrian all the way up to recent rocks. Now, these rocks get compressed in the Mesozoic, so if we look in the modern ranges, we're going to see evidence of thickening. So there is Charleston Peak in the Spring Mountains on the west of town, and these are the, what they're saying is inactive Mesozoic thrust faults, right? That would be like the Keystone Thrust. This would be the Jurassic Sandstone covered by Cambrian Carbonates. Then you've got the valley itself, which is full of gravel and other clastic fill. Over on the east side of town, you've got Frenchman Mountain tilted to the east, right, by a west dipping fault. And then exposed inside Frenchman Mountain, we see the Great Unconformity with Precambrian rocks and Paleozoic rocks on top. And then as we continue to the east, all the way over to the Colorado Plateau, we're going to see, you know, different fault block ranges that have been tilted along these large, recent, normal faults. And then we get over to the Colorado Plateau, we're going to see the same section of Paleozoic rocks with that great unconformity. Pretty simple. Pretty good. All right, so these recent normal faults, when you cruise around the Las Vegas area, almost anywhere you go, any of those ranges, right, you're going to find normal faults. So everything that was previously deposited is going to get offset. So we offset thrust faults, we offset sedimentary rocks, right? Now, typically associated with these faulting, the Cenozoic faulting, when we make these basins, we're going to dump gravels in the basins. And so we see a lot of gravel uh, and clastic rocks forming in the Cenozoic around Las Vegas. Um, the Horse Spring Formation, the Muddy Creek Formation, because these basins have opened up due to the Cenozoic faulting. Over on the left, this is a beautiful normal fault inside the River Mountains, which is the mountain range to the, uh, to the east of Las Vegas. It's a volcanic mountain range made of a, a diced up sort of stratovolcano. These are some andesitic lavas, and there's this large normal fault. This is the hanging wall, this is the foot wall. And there's some grinding here, there's some gravel, but this is sort of fault gouge. Over on the right, what we see is a thick section of Muddy Creek, that's the name of the formation, gravels, okay? This is all basin fill. Rivers, you know, outwash, uh, sort of um, uh, alluvial fans, that kind of thing. And then cutting right through these, is a large basaltic dike that goes up and feeds some lava flows. And that's what you're going to see around this region as well, as associated with the Cenozoic faulting, are lava flows, decompression, melting, and lava flows, as well as ash flow tufts before them. This is over by Hoover Dam. We'll go take a look at that too. So that pretty much covers the sort of general geology around Las Vegas, the kinds of things we're going to see. Next week, we're going to move on a little bit to the northwest, about an hour, oh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. It's about 120 miles to St. George. And now in St. George, we're going to be right on the eastern edge of the Basin Range and on the western edge of the Colorado Plateau, that transition zone. So we're going to see little elements of both. Here's a shot looking northward from St. George. You see a big mountain range in the background. 
Okay, that's called the Pine Valley Mountains, and that's mostly filled with plutonic rocks. It's a lacolith. And then you can see some basaltic, much more recent basaltic lava flows that flow down and make a big mesa. Here's some Mesozoic red sedimentary rocks, all kinds of good stuff. All right, we'll take your quiz, and I will see you next week.